Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It is the latest of our video calls. We've been chatting to everybody while we're all still at home at the minute, and I am delighted to say we've got Tillian on the line. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Yeah, we were just saying it's probably about a year since we last did one of these, and sadly, not a, right. not a huge amount changed in the world. But you know, I'm glad to see that you're you're still keeping well, bandmates still keeping well, and everything in the meantime. Yeah. Yep, I'm actually I'm in Portland now working on new music. So, oh, very is, exciting! Yeah, so I'm not I'm not home. I'm, sure. I'm in the studio. Yeah, it's good that things have started opening up so you can get back to work in a much bigger way. That's really, really exciting. Right. Yeah, man. And we'll get into that. But before we do, I mean, very exciting times. By the time people see this, they will be able to hear your new record, man. Factory Reset is coming. Hell it's yeah. There. So again, last time we had that conversation, you were kind of saying like you were just in the writing process or maybe in the thick of the writing process then in terms of what we can now right. hear as the full record. When did it kind of start to click all together for you, man? Was it in the kind of last few months? When did it, when did it all come together as a full thing? Um, it was pretty gradual. So I had uh, months and months, you know, alone, like everyone. So I kind of just chipped away at it. And then in July and August is when, like, most of the songs started coming together as, as complete uh complete ideas rather than just kind of jotted down demos and, and stuff here and there through a lot of like trips to the desert and and coming back <laughs> yeah was that the working process then little little desert day trips which i guess i guess must yeah. help you clear your head if nothing else to get into a bit of a different environment right definitely yeah and it's just like being around um bizarre type of life and, and kind of a bizarre ecosystem definitely helps with creativity, I think. Yeah, I can imagine, man. I mean, a, a lot's been said about the sound. You've talked about it yourself, how, uh, you know, obviously on first listen, it's quite different to the stuff you do with the band, which I'll come on to as well. But uh, a very bright, uh, very kind of poppy sound. Is it, I guess, what's the aim for you? Is it just, I want to go in and make the music I want to make? Or are you quite conscious about, I'd maybe like to flex a bit of a different muscle than I do within the band? Yeah, I, it's definitely conscious, like what it sounds like, but I think it's more so, um, the, it's, I try to fill the gap in what I listen to. So like there, I try to make music that doesn't exist yet, but, um, that I want to hear. And that's kind of what I went for on this one. I didn't, I, I wasn't trying to have everything necessarily fit together perfectly like there's songs that are you know widely different from each other on this album so yeah just to, just just being able to do what i want creatively and have an outlet for it is like i feel extremely lucky yeah, it's a very to, cool to be position to, to be in. Yeah, for sure, yeah. man. And it's it's nice that it's got um it's got like so many kind of different textures that we haven't really heard from you before. It's a lot of kind of there's some there's some almost like darker R and B sounds in there. There's there's like some kind of really kind of poppy stuff in there as well. And it's it's really cool to see you kind of play with that. Like you say, you're wanting to make new stuff you've never made before. But were there any inspiration points, any artists that you've been listening to recently? You thought I really like what they do. Maybe I could do my own take on it. What were the kind of inspirations in there? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I do, um, I listen to a lot of heavy music, but I also listen to a lot of uh, kind of alternative pop type of music. So I think blending, blending those two in a way that hasn't necessarily, or that I haven't heard, that that was a, a focus. Um, not, and like I said, not on every song. Some songs are just straight pop songs. It's a, so, um, but yeah, I, in terms of a specific band that I was listening to, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm constantly listening to North Lane instrumentals and I, and I have been for years. I don't know. There's something, there's something about that, uh, that I just keep gravitating toward. Yeah, that's funny you mentioned that last time as well. Yeah, North right. here, of course, coming back now as well. We've got, you know, some right. new music from them, which is very exciting to hear, and that's kind of cool. But yeah, I guess that is that is kind of a case in point, though, because 
I mean, it's been it's been discussed to death over the last few years, but it it does bear repeating that these lines between genres keep blurring, and we can still define yeah. something as alternative, and we can still define something in those kind of broader barriers. But in terms of what that sounds like, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. Really, it's all about how you approach it, I guess. Right. Definitely. Yeah, and I feel like every time someone carves out like a little bit of a new genre, it, it kind of sticks around, <laughs> like, it, which is awesome. And every, there's gonna be just, I mean, in the future, there's just gonna be such specific genres for everyone or for whatever mood that you're in that day. I feel like it's just getting more and more uh, diverse, which is cool. Yeah, it's really positive to see. And I think I think it makes things very, very exciting in that way, man, for sure. Um, I want to talk to you a bit about some of the stuff kind of around the record, I suppose, specifically music videos, because I've loved asking people about how that's worked during these lockdown months, man. You've got some quite ambitious visuals you've been putting out and stuff. I imagine a very different experience from when you've done any kind of visual stuff in the past, just because of the nature of the situation we're all in at the minute, right? Yeah, actually, there was a video planned for Dose, and it got it we had to cancel it just because of the, the director's roommate got COVID and then it just it never worked out the timing so yeah it's been it's been wild and then actually we shot an anthem video and didn't like it and then we shot another one <laughs> so it's been it's been a journey <laughs> so the first the first two tries at a music video for this rollout failed so wow. that's that was the setup for, for, but then Anthem came out and I really liked it. I yeah, it was really cool. What didn't you like about the first, uh, your first shot at it? Was it, was it a completely different concept? Yeah, it's, I think it just, it was very special effects based um, and everything was green screen right. and it just didn't quite look the way that I wanted it to look. It was just like, it's yeah. So then we we did the opposite and and, and went to a, a real location and and the anthem video is all it, that that thing actually just exists in the desert. <laughs> I guess it's one of the few advantages of the of you not having to immediately head out on the road to play a load of shows is that you do have the time. Right. If you're not entirely happy with one aspect of it, yeah, you can go and adjust it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Small silver linings there, small silver linings. Uh, mm -hmm. Another thing I want to mention, you know, outside of the band work, before I ask you a little bit about that, something that's happened since uh, since the last time we spoke, you had that Marigolds and Monsters track with Travis Barker was on too. Uh, I just wanted to ask about that working experience, you know, interesting collaboration, definitely very interesting mix of musicians on there. How did that whole thing come about for you? Years ago. Like, I, I tracked those vocals. I, would, I want to say, like, 2011 like it was that long ago wow um yeah and the song and the song kind of just you know sat around for a long time and and then matt malpass wound up using it on his solo album and yeah and then it came out <laughs> were you tempted to go i mean was that literally the same the same vocal track you laid down back then or did you make any adjustments or changes nothing and Honestly, I don't even know if I can sing that that high anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Captured you at a specific moment in time right there, man. That's right. really interesting. But quite cool to see the reaction when it comes out. And if there's one, have Travis on that track as well. That's got to be really cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool. He seems yeah. to be collaborating a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's quite active. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing the rounds. He's doing the rounds. He's a talented guy. He's definitely in demand, isn't he? It's very, very cool to see. Um, well, the, I mean, speaking of things that were cool to see, there's a segue. Dance Gamma Dance, man. Congrats on what you guys have been doing over the last year because, again, when we were chatting around the last album and stuff, Nobody really knew at that point how it was going to work in terms of how people were going to promote their records, how people were going to connect with their fans, have momentum. It feels like you guys developed such a cool plan and those live stream, man, that, 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 what a case in point, what a great achievement, looked great, felt like a really, really cool moment and event for the fans. Just tell me a little bit about putting that together, man. What were the challenges? What were the, the aims that you wanted to achieve in terms of putting together a dance game and dance live stream like that? Yeah. We did the first one and we kind of just um, pulled it out. Like it was, it was like, let's, let's just, let's go to the practice space that we always practice in and just do a show and, and 
put it out. Um, and I think when the first one came out, we were all like, okay, that can't be the, the last thing we put out <laughs> for like this, this long of a time. So let's, let's do it like a lot bigger and better. And, you know, I don't know how many, the production team was, was pretty wild. It was uh, Danny Wimmer Productions put it on. So it was a partnership there. And honestly, we had like, we, we tossed around the idea of like shutting down the bridge downtown in Sacramento. And I thought they were kind of kidding. Like I was like, yeah, that would be cool if, if that could happen. But then I, they just, uh, yeah, they were adamant about it and made it happen. And um, it was pretty cool. It was, it was really cold <laughs> that day. It was like, I don't know, like 30, 30 degrees Fahrenheit around zero Celsius, I guess. Um, and kind of windy. So I was wearing like, you know, the Spanx underneath the suit. <laughs> um, but, Whatever you gotta do to get through it, man. Whatever you gotta do to get through it. Yeah. And, and we wound up doing multiple takes of every song and it was like a long, uh, a pretty long night. And then obviously all the interview and, and ex extra content around it. And the animated video was my favorite part for sure. That was perfect. That really made it, it tied it in. I, I don't remember, I think someone, someone had the idea of continuing on from the last music video and parachuting down <laughs> and yeah, John Howe destroyed that one. That was awesome. Yeah, it just works. Really well. I mean, it's something I've said to a lot of people, but I really do love the fact that with the whole live stream thing, I mean, it's two things, really. First of all, they're all designed so differently and made to appeal directly to their own fandom. I think that's really important. And like, I haven't yeah. seen, I haven't seen one that's been the same from anyone else's, you know, it's really, really cool. Um, but also I love the fact that like you say, you got to shut down a bridge. You were never going to do that during a regular touring cycle. It's cool to yeah, see, you know, take these opportunities to do something that you would never ever be able to do otherwise. Right. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it's all over and, and everybody's done, done the, no one needs to be topped again, but I feel like if this were a situation where it was going to go on for another couple of years, people would just be like, well, we're going to, I don't even know, <laughs> actually jump out of a plane. I don't know. Like there's, there's, you just have to keep it interest, interesting because even just watching like a Super Bowl halftime show when they have like hundreds of I don't know what their budget for a Super Bowl halftime show is, but it's it's got to be massive. It's hard to keep people's attention even for 15, 20 minutes uh, in that and, and keep it interesting the whole time. So the live streams are a pretty big challenge because, I mean, they're not really the type of content people normally watch. Uh, so it has to be pretty engaging. And luckily, um, our fans are are really into the music so that helps and that, and that helped it be interesting yeah absolutely no a hell of an achievement for you guys man congrats on that and then looking forward i guess like you say we find you not at home we find you in a place where you are writing some new music uh mm -hmm. are we talking dance gavin dance are we talking more solo material what kind of stuff are you working on what can you tell me so the this is more solo material it's just Basically, Dance Gavin Dance, we're about to go into the studio too. Okay. Um, and I basically had like this this month uh, and I had a bunch of new material and I was like, okay, well, I might as well put it down because uh, if everything goes well and I do this uh, new Dance Gavin Dance album and, and the tour is on, then I probably won't have time like this for a while. So I'm just trying to capitalize on the time and get more stuff down. I don't know, I, I would say it's gonna develop kind of slowly, like this the, this album that I'm working on now. I, I target, I don't I have no idea when it would come out, maybe <laughs> maybe another year, but, but yeah, right after this, Dance Gavin Dance comes in to, to the same place. And um, yeah, we're gonna make the next one. 
man. It's exciting stuff. I'm glad you guys kind of haven't slowed down. It's all still kicking off. It's really, really exciting. And yeah. It, it feels like we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, it feels like the world did for sure. Yeah, definitely. No, it's cool to see, man. And it's exciting. And you know, obviously we hope to see you guys back out on the road sooner rather than later. You know, it's looking promising. Maybe end of the year shows might be back in some shape or form over here. I don't know. But fingers crossed right. you guys are able to, to get on the road when you can. And I'll leave you with this, man. You know, like we say, before you get to any more new music, that album's about to drop. We're going to put this out, I think, on release day, in fact. So people have just been able to hear it. Big question awesome. to you for finish. But... um. What do you hope the fans take away from this one, man? What do you hope they take away from that first listen, press and play on Factory Reset? Mm, I hope they get addicted to it. Like I was when I, when I was first hearing it back. Like, I, I, think, it's, I think it's really unique and, and a, a kind of a cool uh, take on, I don't know, on what I've been doing. It's, it's, it's new. It's, it's, it's unique. There, there won't ever be anything like it because I won't probably produce my own album fully like I did with this one. Um, so it's going to have very specific tones and sounds and moods. Um, but yeah, I hope they, I hope they like it as much as I do. <laughs> I'm sure they will, man. I'm sure it's going to be a great reaction. It's really exciting, especially given what you've already put out there with the singles that people have had a chance to hear. So congrats on that. Uh, best of luck with the new music and everything. And, you know, just stay safe until we see you next time. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Nice one. All right. Tillion, everybody. <laughs>